This lecture will cover list functions and how they can add functionality to the list data type. Firstly, remember a variable that only has one value is still classed as a list with one value. Values in a list can be separated out with either spaces or commas, like the value of a shorthand CSS property. Lists can also contain lists. Take, for example, our nested list variable. It contains three nested lists within one single list. Now let's look at SAS script functions to add functionality to the list data type. To demonstrate the output, I will first need a little CSS to contain the data, such as a CSS selector and property. The background property value will be where the output of the list functions will be. Let's now start with the length function. This will tell us how many items are within a list. And just like the mixins, these SAS script functions require arguments to be passed in and each argument is separated by a comma. The length SAS function only requires one argument to be passed in, and that is the variable name that will contain a list. If we start with list two, then it will produce the value four because there are four values within the list separated by spaces. But if we calculate the length of the variable nested list, it will only count the values of the root level list. This means it will return three as there are three nested lists in the root level list. Next, we have the nth SAS script function. This allows us to target a specific value within the root level list. The nth list function requires two arguments to be passed in. The first being the list, the second, the value we want to target. For example, we can target the nested list variable, then we can target the second value, or in this case, the second list within the root level list. If we were to target the variable list two containing a single list, it will produce the second value within that list. Moving forward, we have the set nth function that allows you to replace a targeted value within the list and then produce the finished result. This requires three arguments, the first being the list, the second, the value we want to target. Finally, the third is the value we want to replace the targeted value with. If we were to target a single list, then we could change a specific value. Next, we have the list separator function that returns the separator for a list. The returned value will either be a space or a comma. Nested lists don't count, it only looks at the root level list. Next, we have the join function for joining lists and values together. This function requires three arguments, the first two being either lists or values you want to join together. The third argument is optional where you may define the separator. So I'm going to join together list two and also the nested list. So we're joining four lists in total. And when we see the CSS produced, you'll notice it's not separating out the main lists with commas. So this can be a bit of an issue because what it's doing is it's looking at the first list that we've called back, which is list two, and it realizes it's using spaces for separators. But what we'd like to do is separate out the values with commas. So we can either define the third argument, which says comma or space, whichever separator you would like, but this may cause a problem because now you'll notice we have one pixel comma, two pixel comma, three pixel comma, black, then a comma, and then we have the proper commas after that. And that's because that is defined in the nested list. We've defined where the commas go. However, with list two, we didn't do that. 
So there's another little trick that you can do, which is to add in a comma at the end of the variable's value. And that way you're defining where the comma should be placed if we want the comma separator. We can also optionally define whether we'd like space separators as well, which will eliminate all the commas. Now on top of that, we can also take a look at a list and value being joined together. Please do note that when we call back a list via an argument, we are just taking the list value and placing it where it is. It's like a little placeholder for the value of the variable. So we can actually now decide to say, right, join list three, with a string value. So I can define this value as an argument and we'll say open sans and you'll notice that will be attached to the list. We can also choose again to have a space or comma separator. Similarly, we have the append function that adds a value onto the end of a list. As you can see, it did the same job as join, but it's more specific in its role. Append takes three arguments, again the first being the list, the second the value we want to append, and finally we can optionally define a separator type, whether that be space or comma. Moving on, we have the index function which returns a values position within a list. This function requires two arguments, the first being the list we want to target, and secondly the value we are looking for within the list. So I will target list three again and find the position of the value Arial. It's important your value types match exactly. For example, you'll notice I'm looking for Arial with no quotes as that matches the value in the list. So the string type must be the same as a string. If it's in quotes, you need to put the quotes in there. If it hasn't got quotes, you need to leave the quotes out. If you're looking for a value such as four pixel, three pixel, just write it as it is seen within the list. This will then return the value of two. Now be careful with nested lists as you need to type in all of the value of the nested list in order to get the returned position. Just typing in blue won't return anything. So I'm going to type in the entirety of the second nested list and then it will return the value of two. Finally, we have the zip function which combines several lists into a single multi-dimensional list. You can define as many lists as you would like to compound. So for example, I will define three lists with four values each, but you could compound more if you wanted to. Once defined, you'll notice each list value, first, second, third, and fourth, has been iterated through and compounded into four lists. You can also represent list values in separate variables and call them back in the zip function like so. Please note, I'll rewrite this file for the resources download to encompass all we have covered in this lecture. So there we have it. List functions that add a tremendous amount of functionality to list data types.